Awesome. Hello. Hello. All these beautiful people here. Familiar faces. Look over there. Nice. You ready? Yeah. Well, hey, everyone. My name's Hunter. And I'm Jose. And we're two of the co-founders of Lucerna Studios, where we're empowering learning through the passion for games. So Jose and I, we got out of the building, and we've interviewed over 100 parents and educators, and we found some really interesting facts. There's a growing number of parents who are dissatisfied with the public school system, so they take it upon themselves to educate their kids. But that's no easy task. Not only do they have to administer, grade, record, and report everything that their kids do, but they have the full-time job of being a parent on top of that. But their biggest fear is that their kids are going to get stuck in the learning process. It really stresses these parents out to think that they're not teachers, and when their kids get stuck, they might not be able to help them out through these challenging moments. And another thing is, these parents take their kids out of school, and they want to be there with them and bond and grow with them as they grow. But 91% of kids these days identify as a gamer, and that can be a really hard culture for a parent to understand. On the other side, as a kid, learning can be scary. We talk to a lot of these kids, and they'll say, oh, I'm not good at math. And how is that happening? How come a nine-year-old is telling us that they can't do math? The future of the United States depends on bright, critical thinkers that can solve the world's problems of tomorrow. And if we don't inspire them today, we're going to lose them. But learning isn't supposed to be scary. In fact, learning is a game. Before you sit a kid down in a classroom, he's out exploring the world, testing hypotheses, learning how to fail. It's something deep ingrained in our genetic code. Like these cute cubs and kitty cats, they're playing, but they're also learning how to hunt. And it's something deep inside of us. And that's why we provide playful, empowering learning experiences that adapt to your skill level. With that, I'd like to present Medieval Math. Medieval Math is a virtual reality learning game where you protect your castle against trolls and knights using the power of math. The math adapts to make sure that a kid is never bored or overwhelmed. And we chose virtual reality because it's one of the most powerful tools for learning. The fact that you can hear, see, and experience what you do is incredibly important for different learning styles and things like ADD and dyslexia. But the best part is, every question that a kid answers gets tracked by our games. And it's fed to a dashboard for parents where they have actionable data into what their kids are doing. And our games grade and record everything that a kid does, saving parents time and effort throughout their days and weekends. And if a kid does get stuck, our games are going to be able to recommend content to help out, such as Khan Academy videos or supplemental websites to keep the education going. So how are we doing this? Well, we're going to be making mobile VR games. Everything you need is right here in your phone. We're going to be selling our games as a service, where parents can subscribe to our platform, giving them full access to our game library and the analytics that are behind them. And we're offering a free VR headset to those parents who subscribe to our preferred tiers, allowing those family and kids to jump right into the learning and play. So Hunter and I met 10 years ago at our university's ROTC program, where we learned how to develop leaders of character and build lasting organizations. I graduated with a degree in computer graphics and came here to EA Sports, where I learned how to build beautiful games and efficient pipelines. After four years, I quit, and I convinced Hunter to move to Orlando to build a game studio with a purpose. And since then, we've completed some awesome milestones. In the fall, we both went through Starter Studio program down at the Starter Studio. Jose was on the championship team for the Techstars Startup Weekend, and, the both, and both of us just completed the UCF i program two weeks ago. Over the last few months, we've gained some pretty awesome people on the team. Hannah works here at the Rollins Entrepreneurship Center. She studies computer science, and she's a homeschool kid, or she was homeschooled, making her a perfect fit as a, for our CTO. Alfred is our marketing director. He has 10 years of experience in sales and marketing, and he also founded an ed tech company here in Orlando, so he understands our industry extremely well. And Jenny Beth, she's our curriculum director. She is a homeschool parent, and she has also spent the last 20 years in the public education system, not only teaching, but developing curriculum for the entire state of Texas. So we're making sure that our games hit these standards that these parents care about. But we couldn't have done this without this awesome board of advisors that we've set up. We have Eric Sand on board, who has over 15 years selling in the edtech field and leading companies to acquisition. We have Alan Schaefer, who's helping us. He has over 30 years building companies and currently runs a STEM toy website that services over 1,500 private schools. And we have Rachel, who's a homeschool parent and entrepreneur here in Orlando. She's helping us understand the homeschool community in Florida and the surrounding regions. So a little bit about where we're going. In April, we're going to release the Founders Edition of Medieval Math to our early adopters. That's going to give us valuable feedback from the gameplay testing, which we'll use to improve our game. We'll also finish in creating the analytics and the platform to distribute our game for our hard launch in Q3 of this year. After that, every five months, we'll be able to release a game from our studio. Our second game, after talking to these homeschool parents, we found out that they really love to take their kids outside of the home to museums and, and show them the things outside of the house that they're learning inside. And so we're going to leverage the power of VR to create a travel language learning game that's a perfect fit for them. 
Down the road, we're going to become the EA of EdTech games. We don't want to just create content, but we want to find educational games, empower them with our analytics, and distribute them through the channels that we're creating for our own games. So we went out, talked to a lot of homeschool parents. We found out that there's three main ways that homeschool parents find their resources and curriculum. The first is they're all part of a local or state homeschool association, such as the Florida Parent Educator Association here in Florida, which serves over 18,000 active members. We'll use their marketing channels, such as newsletters, magazines, to promote our games and services to them. They also go to homeschool conventions. They love to test and see products before they make their purchases. And the FPA actually throws a convention here in May that attracts upwards of 20,000 people from Florida and the surrounding states. And word of mouth is huge in this community. So we're going to be leveraging influencer marketing to show and demonstrate our projects or our products through blogs and YouTube reviews, which will all lead back through the App Store where they can subscribe to our platform. So we have intentionally chosen homeschool parents because they have great early adopter tendencies. They spend from $300 to $500 on extra learning curriculum to make sure their kids are always excited about learning. Not just that, but they love to put new technology in the household to prepare these kids for tomorrow. And that's a $400 million market. As we grow, there's a lot of public and private schools that have huge problems that we can solve once we have robust analytics and a bigger game library. And that's a $1.8 billion market. When we talk about becoming a publisher, all these distribution channels that we're forging, we can connect everybody that's making educational games with all sorts of customers, people that, you know, parents, schools, we can be part of that revenue stream. And today that's a $3.2 billion market, but by 2022, it's going to be an $8.1 billion market. But a little bit about what sets us apart. We're kind of like STEM toys and Google expeditions where we're really high engagement for the kids. But we're also like a Becca, which provides full curriculum to the homeschool family. And it puts us in this sweet middle spot where we get to create fun educational games that are backed by analytics for the family. So Jose and I, we sat down and we created a sales projection chart based on the homeschool buying patterns, which would make us cash flow break even 16 months after we start selling. And the, the beautiful part is we only need 2,200 active subscribers on our platform to achieve this. And that's why we're here today asking for a 550k seed investment round, which would give us an 18-month runway. We'd use those funds to finish developing Medieval Math, our second language game that I spoke about, the analytics and the platform to distribute these games as well. In closing, I want to show you a video of when we were at a STEM convention. We were showing a bunch of kids our games, and they were so excited about it. This one kid, she was so excited that she wanted her mom to play. And as her mom's playing, the kid's saying, Mom, these are the math answers. She doesn't care that she's doing math. She's having a great time. And on the other side, the mom, she's laughing, she's yelling. This is the first time she's experiencing virtual reality. And when I saw this, I knew that we were creating something. I knew that we could recreate this experience for millions of people all around the world, and that Lucerna could empower learners learning through the passion for games. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So, a nice presentation, uh, but let's get down to the detail. Um, how much of this exists? Where are you guys? I, I want to use the word science project, but it starts to sound like that, okay? Uh, so we're in the MVP phase, MVP phase, so we have a working version of the game that we can show you if you'd like. Um, it has 20 levels, it has addition through pre-algebra into it with fractions, interlevel math, and the ability for the parents or the kids to select the math that they would like. Okay, so you have, you have something that you can put in front of a customer today. Correct. Yeah, so on April 15th, uh, I guess two, two weeks from now, we're having an event. Everybody's welcome. It's a STEM fair. We're going to release our game as an MVP kind of pilot program, a founder's edition. And it's ready to go. The kids can play. Uh, you know, we're, we're basically, from then on, we're going to focus on replayability because the game works fine. It's great. We just want to make sure that the kids want to keep coming back. It's our priority. Okay, but, but when are you going to be ready to have somebody pay money for it? April 15th. That's when they'll have the founders, okay. and then in right, July. Okay. That's good. Okay, yeah. good. In July is when we release. And then the, what? What about all the support effort behind it? You know, you're gonna have people with questions, concerns, issues. Um, what? What do you look? What does it look like? What's the team look like that can support questions and concerns and whatever else that's coming from from customers? Uh, j just to clarify, what kind of questions are you? Well, I mean, whatever. I mean, customer hey, this support. doesn't work. I can't figure that out, or my kid can't add. I don't know what what the questions are gonna be. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for, for right now, you know, we have a, a team of uh, five people that can, you know, manage the customer support as we grow. Um, so the, the initial Founders Edition, we all, we're only limiting it to 100 headsets, 100 games. Okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're kind of building it slowly, making sure that, you know, we'll notice all these questions and we'll kind of build the infrastructure for July when we actually start to uh, send it to the masses. Thanks.
Yeah, so you know, I guess your, your sales model is a monthly recurring subscription. Correct. I mean, it, what, what comparable games are parents paying $15 a month for a single game with 20 levels? There's not a lot that are at the $15 price point. Now, there's a suite of games. Sure. Uh, for example, Toka Boca makes a bunch of games, and they maybe have 20 games, and they're all like $2.99 a pop. They're right. semi-educational, where they teach some foundational stuff, but they're mostly just entertaining. And none of them are really imp imp have these analytics, and that's kind of like our secret sauce to everything. I know, but again, your game, right, is... SaaS. Yeah, right, say that again? A SaaS. It's a recurring, uh, it's a service. I understand it's a SaaS model, but the product that you have is, is a singular product for basic math, Correct. right? Mm -hmm. So how, I mean, I guess, how do you continue that... So that subscription interest. Yeah, so we're basing it basically on, on our experience with video games um, because we know that kids and you know parents will buy subscriptions to things like World of Warcraft, and we'll constantly be you know we'll, we'll have to create, keep supporting this game to make sure that we get these uh, you know get the value for these parents. And you know the powerful part is the the back end, the, these analytics, you know this dashboard. That's really what the parents will be finding the value in, and we'll be supporting that. But I think uh, maybe to answer your question a little better. The, it's not just the one game down the road. We want to have a library of games, and it's that one subscription that allows them access to all the games that are in it. I know, but, but to acquire that customer without that suite of games, I agree with you. I think if you had a suite of games, then you've got a better shot of, of acquiring customers. If you got a single game, I think with your model, which I think is the right model if you had a suite of games, would, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how many folks are going to sign up to pay that monthly recurring amount for a single game initially. Yeah, and, and this, this game will, right now it has about uh, 30 hours of gameplay, and that's just the beginning. I mean, we can definitely, that's, that's why we're making sure we, to, to make this, the key to making this work is this replayability. You know, we're adding kind of RPG elements, making sure that, that these kids want to keep grinding in here and keep leveling up, because, you know, we'll have, we have uh, five levels planned out, and it'll make it, it'll make it, make sure that you know, if you want to get to the end, if you want to see your character all beefed up, you want to, you you got to put a lot of hours into the gameplay. Right. Yeah. And I mean, also the the other question is, with the homeschooling, you're you're you're, you're trying to slot into a curriculum. Is that uh, su for supplement the association? curriculum. We, we're not we're, we're not looking to replace. It's just supplemental stuff on stuff on existing. So talking to these parents, they spend three to five hundred a year on extra stuff besides what they're already right. spending. But but have you started that with any association? Uh, currently, no. Yeah. We have tested it at multiple places where the parents. Mm -hmm. uh, love the concept, love the space that you guys are in. Uh, feel as if, you know, some of the iterations here on the revenue model might evolve, right, etc. It does strike me, though, that the landscape, the competitive landscape, is a lot more competitive than what you put up on that you know, little slide, right? So, so walk me through the execution plan, right, that will differentiate you to get to those couple thousand users. Um, are there alliances in place? How are you thinking about it? That, that seed investment, you can burn through that in marketing alone just to try and get to your critical mass. What, what, what have you guys thought about right now in terms of how you're actually going to execute getting customers in what is a great space but a crowded and competitive space? So the, there's a lot of disorganization in the gaming space on, on the edtech side. And so in the long goal, goal is to reorganize that kind of as the publisher for edtech. But to get to, to these guys, uh, it's the, the homeschool associations. Every single one of these parents belongs to one. It, it's what they have to do. They all get these magazines, and they're all, it's all part of that the bigger structure for the homeschool. And we know that they, they go to these conventions, and that's where they drop a ton of their money. And they're looking for content to buy right then and there for the household. And that'll be kind of our, our grassroots campaigns to get those 2,200, those early subscribers that we're talking about. So I think... In theory, right, not, to, not, not to belabor this point, but there's an entity called K-12, mm -hmm. right, publicly traded, multi-billion dollar corporation that is entirely catering to this kind of virtual learning, potentially also homeschool market, mm -hmm. a full curriculum from K right through 12, have a lot more money than that, that they could throw at gamifying math, right, for that. So I, I, again, I'm just trying to understand, um, you know, wh what's the unique edge here around 
maybe something in the game or something in the go-to-market strategy that um, you know that, that that helps us to get a little more confidence around uh, you getting to that critical mass. It's a big it's a big space. I mean, a lot of plays for more than one player, so I get that. But um, but but still trying to figure out because other companies are marketing to that same audience. So a lot of the games that are out there now are semi-educational at best. Ours are going to be based on the, the Florida, the, the standards that these teachers are teaching to, and they track. So, I mean, what sets us apart from the crowded space is that we're creating tools that are aligned with what the schools are already teaching, but we're, we're putting them to the homeschool market. There's a, there's a big, uh, a lot, when a lot of these people that get into this kind of virtual education space, they kind of slam themselves into the public education system and, and you know, and we found, and there's kind of this big assumption that we found was wrong that these homeschool parents are kind of disorganized and hard to reach. And so I think a big differentiator is that we're really focusing this stuff specifically to home, homeschool parents. There's, there's really not any sort of tool like what we have right now that, that ad that's specifically toward them that, you know, we're, we're marketing our channel and, and our branding, everything to these guys. Uh, that, that does that, that is not just a little game, you know, it's, our thing is not a game, it's a powerful tool for these parents that, uh, that's attached to a game. And, and those analytics, these next steps for learning, that's, that's not happening anywhere. And, and if the seed investment, um, at what valuation are you trying to raise that money? We're probably doing a convertible note, so we probably push the valuation uh, at a later stage. And we're looking at like cap around five. All right, thank you so much. Please join me in.